Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. There are a few sort of um, orbiting satellites of doom and gloom hanging around Biden's uh, acknowledgement that he's not going to stand again for presidency come November elections. Firstly, if he is uh, far too frail mentally and physically to run for president in November, then surely he's far too frail physically and mentally to be f the president now. Surely he should resign out of any kind of respect. To continue means that America literally has a self-admitted weak man who's incapable of holding the office. This is the problem. Why, why would you not quit? If you're so weak that you admit you can't continue, why are you continuing? Presumably, of course, it's so that he can hang on in the hope that Hunter uh, gets his court case concluded and then regardless of the outcome, Joe can give him a presidential pardon because he knows full well, of course, Trump won't. That's the first one. That's that out of the way. Another thing is, and this has been something that's being touted around various news agencies, is if this removal of, from power has been done by the likes of Barack Obama and Nancy Pelosi, then has there been an effective coup d'etat in America? I think there possibly has. I think it's entirely possible that this is the case. To have a man completely removed and told he cannot stand again, even though he kept going around and saying, yes, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to, and not doing as exactly he was supposed to do, which is to say, well, OK, I will go after all, despite what everyone was saying, does kind of put it into your mind that there has been this decision made. He just was made aware of what had already been decided by others. And that means, obviously, there's been a coup d'etat. He's been removed from office unwillingly. America, again, has this weird relationship with their president like that. He wouldn't be the first time that's happened. It's a very weird situation generally in America as well because, and here's the thing, there's now a call by some Republicans to actually sue the Democrat Party, Democratic Party, for damages because they've geared up and paid for attack ads against Joe Biden. And Joe Biden still, you know, is not going to be there. So they're not going to, you know, they put these attack out ads against Biden. But of course, Biden's not running now. And so there's a case of suing them for that. There's also the case uh, that the Republicans are also looking to bring a case that Joe Biden should not have been removed and that he should have been allowed to continue to fight. It's all very weird. They're going to also say that all the funding arrange, uh, arrangements for Biden-Harris should now be returned and started from new for Harris and insert name here. It's it's just crazy what they're doing. So what they're doing, they're opening up onto the Republicans, sorry, the Republicans are opening up onto the Democrats, this lawfare, which is what they did, the, Repub uh, the Democrats did against Trump. Trump won his case and it's it's fine, it's history. They'll probably win. The you know the Democrats will probably win. It probably won't be a thing, but it will at least tie them up. You know, I just I just love all the fact that there's all this infighting, and then of course uh, immediately uh, once it was announced, um, the Trump campaign released a whole uh, attack ad immediately against Kamala Harris. I'm presuming they thought that this might happen, and they had it prepped, and so boom, and it went out. And it just goes and just shows all the things that she's done wrong. These people are good. They, they're just fantastic. Anyway, just a whole little slew of things that are going on. Just thought I'd pass on. Anyway, there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Speak soon. Bye-bye.